My check ride in the chipmunk. Shit. <laughs> and I'm definitely feeling the pressure as I take another step on my journey to learn to fly warbirds like my grandfather did. This episode is the culmination of several days of really intensive training with the Canadian Historical Aircraft Association. In the first episode, we covered the sort of thing the training was leading up to. This is probably the coolest thing I've done today. Then we jumped into it and we started working intensively on my type conversion training for the DHC-1 chipmunk. I'll try to get it stabilized again before I try to round out. Dave Carrick was the Czech pilot getting me prepared for my sign-off flight with Ron. He's the chief pilot with the CH-2A and before you can solo, you gotta fly with him. But the wind was a lot worse today than it had been throughout the training. So we went for a quick warm up. So we've got a crosswind today. So we'll simulate that this here is runway 12, and we've got a wind at 170 at 14 knots right now. So it's coming from the right. Like any tail dragger, super important in run into wind. Now it's it's about how much is run into wind. Be conscious of it. Remind yourself on final, got a crosswind from the right, and that when you touch down, the airplane is going to be might might behave in a way that doesn't necessarily indicate what the problem is, if you're going, this is just not behaving, like it's, it's probably because you're not feeding in the, the appropriate crosswind, right? In a three-point attitude, it might be a two-point attitude. It might be a two-point landing, you know, tail and, and right wheel first, and then it's, it's going to be a little more behaved in the, in the wheelers. And don't stop flying the airplane until it's stopped. Okay. It's a little, little more challenging. I promise you it's capable. Okay, let's go do it. Let's go do it. It was probably a good idea to bang out a few crosswind landings before I flew with Ron. They're prop! Seems like every pilot's least favorite is, is crosswind from the right, and I think that comes from the, the supination of your arm, because you, it's much more natural to push into the crosswind with the aileron than to pull away from you with it. But that's just what we're gonna be dealing with. If we were in the Stearman, I would say all of the aileron into wind. Like, as soon as it's down, you could basically bury that thing. It's not gonna dip to the right, because the ailerons in the Stearman are so ineffective with only the bottom set. So there's your crosswind. Of course, by the time we got going, it was actually a left crosswind, but it was gusting and changing directions, so the lesson still applies. Regardless, these were definitely the most challenging winds I'd faced in the chipmunk, and of course it had to be on the day I was going to be tested. Probably at this, this level of crosswind, it's probably time to start thinking about half flaps. It's kind of dealer's choice. You can use full, full flaps. It's, it's not a hard and fast rule if you want to use half flaps. I honestly think we could start with full flaps because they're just not, it's only 30 degrees, and they're only half of the way. They're not, and there's no split underneath or anything. They're not huge flaps. This episode won't cover the specific procedures related to the chipmunk like we did in the previous episodes, but to summarize, this thing has a really weird brake situation. There's no braking on the pedals. It's this handle below the throttle on the left. It requires like juggling your hands and stuff, so definitely check the previous episodes to see how that works. Now just be patient. Down. down. Yeah, tail's down. Stick back. It was definitely satisfying to get the hang of it in the crosswinds though. I also want to note for this episode the intercom gets a little wonky, but like I said for the previous ones, that's really where the training was detailed and that's where we had good audio, so check it out. I'll put links in the description and you can also visit flightchops.com for curated content that'll help you get caught up on the back catalog. But this one's going to be really about the story of getting signed off to solo this thing, which was a true honor. So before flying with Ron, we did one more wheeler where I really wanted to focus on nailing those crosswind controls. I don't think you're going to idle, but uh, I think you might want it. But yeah, we're not going full flat because of crosswind, right? Yeah. It was back to a right crosswind for this one, so I was happy to get that one wheel down first if you watch the right wheel. Oh, that was good. Oh, beautiful. Be patient. Patient, and it's on the brake. See, I looked down for a second. Don't look down. I, don't, I, don't, I couldn't find the brake. Yeah. Okay, here we go, braking. And stick back, still into the crosswind. And with that, I was ready, or ready as I was ever going to be anyway. But honestly, Ron is such an awesome guy. I don't know why I was so stressed out about flying with him. I think it was more that I just didn't want to disappoint him. Well, Steve, you've had your checkout training and everything went well as far as you're concerned? 
Yeah, I think so. I feel pretty good. You didn't find anything that uh, was different, uh, different sure too much from it? <laughs> Trying to hold the stick and the brake at the same time while also pinching. That was weird. Ron assured me that I was not the only one to find the ground handling of the chipmunk unique. I just want to rubber stamp that, that everything's fine. We'll go up and do a little upper air work. We'll go to the county, do a couple of steep turns, have you do a couple of stalls. Perhaps we'll do a spin. Okay, let's do okay. a spin, sure. You've spun the uh, Super Cub and that sort of thing. Yep. Maybe just a few arrows? Sure, I'll do some arrows with you. Yeah, I'd okay. love to, yeah. We'll come back in and stamp your book. All right. Good. Okay, thanks. Let's go flying. Ron has flown everything from F-86 Sabre Jets to the F-104 Starfighter, and he's gone Mach 2, and he's 85 years old. We feel that it's a, a very worthwhile thing that we do resurrect old airplanes and honor veterans. But I started to fly at the Windsor Flying Club, which was in this hangar, right in this room, right here, in, uh, in 1946. I've instructed for many, many years, and uh, some people don't like instructing, but I've always enjoyed instructing, and I've always enjoyed instructing with students who, who are as keen as I am. And I was definitely keen. <laughs> yeah, fun for it. Windsor Tower, it's Charlie Yankee, Romeo holding short of 30 at Delta, ready to go for a southeast train flight. Charlie Yankee, Romeo, Windsor Tower, left turn out about 2,500 feet in the zone, wind 340 at 11, clear takeoff, runway 30. Clear takeoff 30, it'll be left turn out, not left flight 100, Charlie Yankee, Romeo. And of course I choked a little during the whole juggle thing here. So not an awesome way to start a check flight, but Ron's a great guy and the rest of the flight went well. And again, the previous episodes will cover the fact that this engine is upside down and spins the opposite direction we're used to, so P factor is the other way, and you got to use left rudder with power application. Our altitude restriction is 2,500 feet. Yeah. Otherwise, we're good. I tend to talk to myself a lot, just in case you're wondering. That's fine. I enjoy people doing that. When you're uh, getting first checked out, it's a good idea. And whenever you're ready at 35, you can lump along and uh, you can give me a steep turn each way. Roger. Please check out the flightshops.com website. We've got the back catalog curated there. And we've also got a mailing list we use for notifications and behind the scenes news. So please check that out. Okay. Whenever you're ready, I'm ready back here. You can give us a little pre-stall check and then we'll do a stall. Okay, so Hazel, we're good. Area is good. Security, we're good. Engine is going to be, make sure everything's good. Thanks, Ron. That's Ron, Mr. Rich. Do a power off stall first with clean and then we'll do one with plug. We did one more stall and then we did a spin, but I cut out the lead up because again the intercom just wasn't that great. But it was kind of usable for the spin, so I kept it. So we're going to go left or right? Which way left? Left. Okay. Is that too much pitch up? Maybe just a little, but that's okay. Here we go. Okay, recover. Good. Okay, uh, the only thing more we're going to do is a uh, And 
we started with some loops. We dive it down, and once the nose comes up to above the horizon and the pull up, then I go full power. Okay. So the intercom recording for the procedure of the forced approach was pretty unusable up to this point, so I cut out the portion getting set up for that field. But suffice to say, it went well, and if you want to see the full forced approach procedure, please check out the previous episode, where I covered it thoroughly with Dave. On the way home, we did some more aerobatics, which really helped melt away the pressure that I was feeling about this sort of check flight. Oh, so smooth. Awesome. Okay. Okay. All right. You got control. Future episodes will cover aerobatic training with Chipmunk in detail, but for now, just enjoy this montage. But of course I was reminded I did need to still show Ron I could land this thing. And the pressure was on as the wind had switched yet again since the morning. I'm happy to report that I managed to do three good ones in a row and we really didn't say much so I'll just cut the landings back to back here. It went well. I was only briefly flustered about all the things I expected to be flustered about despite my prep. Thanks, He's Mark. a qualified chipmunk pilot. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> right, thanks, Ron. We just had fun. <laughs> yes, we did. I was pretty excited to get Ron's endorsement in my logbook. So whatever you want to do here, I don't know if this works, but uh, this is the uh, page for the types, okay. I guess. So you can make a, take as much space as you want. This is the coolest endorsement I've got. <laughs> So it's official, I'm a Yellowbird pilot, I got the wings and the pin to prove it. Well this is it. My time has come and it feels pretty damn good. This is honestly like a first solo again and it's an honor to log some pilot in command time in a literal piece of history. Hey, Flying these airplanes is like getting closer to that dream I had as a kid just to do loops and rolls and fly like you're free. But I think many of us face this sort of underlying disappointment when you get into flight training and you're faced with the limitations of modern training aircraft. It's a real treat to be able to fly an airplane like this the way it was meant to be flown. And for me there's an extra benefit, I'm really trying to honor the memory of my grandfather who flew Spitfires. And I think I might have found the best place in the world to get Spitfire training. If you want to join me for the journey to learn to fly a Spitfire over the English Channel, that's what I'm working toward. Thanks again to Patreon supporters and sponsors for making these productions possible. 
So I'll be sharing a lot more of the training with the CH2A. Uh, I'm gonna be doing some more formation and aerobatics flying, but it just won't all have these epic production values. It'll be sort of the more old school style videos because I won't always have James there to get this awesome B-roll. Steve, this is your solo flight. You're wondering what this footage is. Please share the videos, comment, like, subscribe, and check out flightchops.com to see the back catalog, but also to join the mailing list so we can reach you, let you know when we publish, and it also gets you entered into the monthly giveaway from all the sponsors, which is awesome. And as always, keep your flight chops sharp. Recording, 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 recording. All right, all right. So we are good. You can no, you don't have to worry about this shit anymore. Thank you. All right, all right. Good luck.